Hey there! Do you also feel annoyed when playing around with web APIs in ASP.NET Core and each time you debug, a new browser window opens only to display a page not found response? In this case, continue watching since in this video we'll show a trick on how to avoid this and start your ASP.NET Core applications in the console. And believe me, this might be more useful than you think, so stay tuned. Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. In this video we'll talk about how to start an ASP.NET Core application in the console. And the reason why I think this might be important, especially if you're new to ASP.NET Core, is that, for instance, if you work with web APIs and play around and try to create your own APIs and test them and so on, every time you debug, guess what oh, what happens a new browser window opens only to display a page not found error which is annoying because we really don't want to display any page here we just want to get our application started and to maybe use postman so that we can make some requests and see exactly what these requests return so let me close down this browser window and uh, let's get started and show you how you can start this application in the console one thing to add is that this might be even more useful than you think because starting the application in the console not only prevents a browser window to open each time you want to run this application but you have also access to some very interesting things like logging and so on and we will see exactly how, how we can configure this. So let's get started first. Making this application start in the console, console is very easy. But for starter, what I have here is the standard Web API template from Visual Studio. It's just targeted to ASP.NET Core 2.1, which is in preview, and that's why you see here some middleware that you probably won't see in out-of-the-box templates if you target ASP.NET Core 2.0. And if we right-click on the project and on properties, there are some things that we can configure here. And let's wait just a little bit to see exactly what we have here. First of all, we can see that this is of type .NET Core 2.1. And if we go here at debug, what we can do here in profile, we can choose here not IIS Express, but the name of the project itself. And here in launch, just on project. And then we have here a checkbox so we can uncheck this and what will happen right now is that theoretically this application shouldn't start a new browser window when we when we run it but instead it should open a console and let's see how this works however before launching the application there is one more thing we have to do and here we have to change from is express to asp console and now we can hit F5 and let's see what happens. So we are waiting a little bit, but I would expect that no browser window will pop up. Instead, I would expect a console to pop up. Here, the application is not responding for now. I hope it's uh, not for a long time. But here's the console and you can see here the application builds up. No browser window is open. And right now you can see that your application is up and running. So this means that if you have a web API that you want to test, you can easily do that simply by making a request to the desired uh, API uh, U URIs. So that's kind of cool. Let's however check exactly what happens if we really make a request. And let's for now close this, ap this application and let's go to controllers and we have this default values controller and here we see that if we make a get request to uh, api.values we should receive some information like value 1 and value 2. So let's try to do this in postman and see exactly what we get. We'll first launch the application once again. It should bring up the console and we should see the exact same information that we saw also previously. And here you can also check out we have two different uh, listeners, let's say. One is for HTTP and one is for HTTPS. 
And one of the core new features of ASP.NET Core 2.1 is that it supports HTTPS by default. And if you ask yourself how is this possible, well it's fairly easy when you install the .NET Core 2.1 SDK. You will also get prompted to install the uh, ASP.NET Core certificate and uh, import it to your trusted root certificate store. And this is how HTTPS requests will then work also locally when you test. What we will need from here is this uh, base URL because we would need that to put it in Postman so that we can construct our call to our API. So it would be this one, it is an HTTPS URL, then uh, API and of course values and that's pre pretty much it. What we could do here without any other fancy things like headers, authorization or body and so on, just hit the send button and we receive this response value 1 and value 2 as we would expect. So here is really nothing very spectacular, but the spectacular thing I expect to be in the console. And if we bring up the console again, we can see here that something happened since we went here the, the last time. So we see here some uh, logging directly from ASP.NET Core. We see exactly that uh, we received an HTTP GET request. We see exactly what this request looked like. And we see a lot of information about the request itself. Also how many milliseconds it took to complete and so on. So this is really, really interesting. But why I said that maybe starting a uh, web API in the console when testing and debugging is a good choice is that we can also add our custom logging very easily in ASP.NET Core. So if we add our custom logging, what it will happen will decide at certain points in the code to log something. And then when uh, the execution will hit that part, our logs will be also displayed here in this console. So in order to not keep this video short, because I usually do longer videos, let's also really look how we can set up a very, very ba basic logger in ASP.NET Core. Therefore, we'll now change back to Visual Studio. And we are here on the startup.cs, where we can configure different things about our ASP.NET Core application. One of the first thing that we can do here is add another service. As you may know, adding your services may, makes them available in uh, the dependency injection sy system in ASP.NET Core. So this means that when we do that, we would be able to pass an instance of a logger to our controllers. So let's make it here services.add logging. Here it's add. I do a lot of typos right now. Maybe I'm too tired. Okay, so this should work fine. We do not configure anything special about this logger right now. However, since we have con configured this uh, service, we can now also go a little bit further and also use a middleware or defining a little bit better what we want to do here in the configure method. The first thing that we need to do here is provide an instance of the iLogger factory that we can then further use. So it would be iLogger factory and let's call it logger factory. And now we would have this logger factory available in this code block. So what we can do is call it logger factory dot add console. And uh, here we can also specify something like min level. And this should be log level, let's take warning. What this will do is it will make sure that we will log to the console only the logs that are minimum a warning or an error. So no logs that, that, that are as a uh, hierarchy lower than this uh, warning or error. Right now, after we have done this, we should have a logger available in our values controller. Of course, if we need it, we have to build it and we can therefore create a constructor for this values controller. So CTOR and hit shift two times. So this will create our constructor 
what we would need is also a private field that we will create right now and this private field would be of type uh, ilog ilogger and the important thing is that the ilogger that comes to us through this dependency injection system is always a typed logger so this means that it would be an ilogger of values controller which is the controller in which uh, we are right now and let's call it logger and here in the constructor we will also take in an uh, i logger of type values controller and let's call it logger what we will have to do is import also the uh, corresponding namespace because we don't have it right now which is microsoft extensions logging and right now everything should be good let's now just use our field and make it equal to the logger that we get in from the dependency injection mechanism in asp.net core and now we should be able to log something so let's get into this uh, get method and this returns the value 1 and value 2 that we saw previously in postman what we can do here is use our logger to log warning because the minimum level we set is warning and here of course we can provide a string that would describe what we want to log let's also use string interpolation here because we will want to use some uh, some variables and let's write here request star tid at and here let's use date time dot utc now let's display the utc time and what we would expect right now is that uh, when we run this application and if we go to postman and make a request again then we should be able to see our log in the console so let's run it and check if this is really the case right now the application is starting as we saw earlier we will see some basic information in the console like uh, where exactly the application is running and so on now we should be good to go so if we click here on send we got the exact same things back so nothing spectacular again but if we go back to the console what we see here is that we have these two warnings and we can see that these warnings are those that came for us because it's request started at and then the date time now but the UTC time is displayed. So our logger does work very very fine and everything seems to be okay. A main advantage of using or running ASP.NET Core applications in the console is that when you debug you can have easy access to all your customized logging that you might want to do and that would help you to trace problems and to see exactly how your application is performing. If we wouldn't do that then, uh, or if we wouldn't start the application in the console, we can still write to the debug window. So this means that it would appear or our information, our logs would appear here somewhere. And it would be very difficult for us to exactly find our logs because there, there's a lot of text here and it's very, very hard to find a way through it. But here we can see our warnings. It's, uh, ev it, it's visible in plain sight. So very easy to trace if something goes wrong. The important thing is that, of course, the logger that we configured right now is a very basic and simple logger, but it does its job. However, these are the main steps that you would use in order to configure a custom logger, which could take different configuration options uh, and so on, scopes, and there are a lot of things that we can talk about uh, logging in ASP.NET Core, and we will surely do this on developer ramp up. Also, it's important to note that uh, similar to this way, you can uh, add your logs also to the debug window or even to some log files. And you can integrate ASP.NET Core with some very specialized logging libraries like uh, Serilog or Nlog, which you can pull down through the NuGet package manager in your Visual Studio project. So that's basically how a ba very basic logging is done in ASP.NET Core. What we have seen in this video is how we can change our ASP.NET Core applications and let's say configure them to start in the console and not to open a new browser window each time we want to run the application even for testing purposes. 
This is especially useful if you are working with the web APIs where you do not have any front end. You will just use a client similar to Postman to make requests and see if the responses are okay. Of course, if you are building web applications with Razor pages, then you would need to start it in the browser also, because you would certainly also want to check if your Razor pages are okay. Good, so uh, that's basically it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content overall on Developer Ramp Up, please hit the subscribe button. If you have friends that might be interested, don't be shy and share this channel with them. Also, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, it would be highly appreciated. And if you have any feedback, then uh, please feel free to hit me with, with a comment. Thank you once again for watching and until the next time, I wish you happy coding.